Well, talking about Sanchez, let's talk about the game like yesterday. Mm. Um, Tottenham won, Arsenal nil in the final pre-season uh, before the season starts this weekend against Man City. Um, I was there yesterday. Uh, it was great. It nice was atmosphere? Great to be back. Uh, yeah, it was a nice atmosphere. It wasn't like that North London derby atmosphere because um, obviously there was no Arsenal fans there. I mean, it was majority just like families and kids and, and whatever. So it was like a nice, it was a nice atmosphere there, a nice friendly atmosphere. Um, it was very good to be back. Grandpa was very happy to be back. Uh, if you haven't seen it, check out um, the vlog that we put out yesterday. A bit of a different style vlog uh, than we have done in the past, but uh, check it out. It was it was good fun to be back, mm. and the way I assessed the game, I thought first 10, 15 minutes we looked really good. We came out the blocks. I thought we looked really good, and then Arsenal just got, took control of that first half. In my opinion, I thought I thought we looked really bad uh, for the last like twenty minutes of the of the first half. I really did. Uh, but then as soon as the second half started, I thought for that whole forty five minutes of the second half we were on top of them. Uh, there was only one team that was going to score in that second half. And I thought we looked brilliant. We did. I thought we looked brilliant in that second half. I thought Lucas Moura uh, was unbelievable yesterday. He was central to everything that was good coming through Spurs yesterday. I thought Japit Tanganga looked really good mm. at right back yesterday. I mean, that assist. He, brilliant. He, he, brilliant. Took, he took Paolo Mari for a run yesterday, Yeah, and, and Pepe as and well. Pepe, for both yeah. of them. They couldn't handle him. I thought he was, it was a great... That he goal showed was, that physicality, didn't he? It was all about Tanganga, that goal. Yeah. All about Tanganga. He was absolutely... Absolutely brilliant. I must say, I was very, very impressed when from Jaffet um, yesterday. I was. I thought he was super, super aggressive up against Bamiyang. Always on him. Um, didn't give him a, um, a second to breathe. Um, I thought, um, apart apart from um, the goal, I don't think he had too many um, op, uh, moments in the final third. But I thought defensively, he was spot on. And he I was. thought time after time, he was getting in front of things, blocking things, making tackles, being really aggressive. And they couldn't get past him. Yeah, and I think that when you look at Jaffet Tanganga and you compare his performance to his performance against Chelsea, so we always say he's a natural centre-back and, and we want to see him more at centre-back. But he played centre-back against Chelsea, looked shaky. Played right back against Arsenal, looked quite good. Yeah, so I don't know. It's a friendlies, but I mean, you know, it's hard to judge yeah. too much. But it didn't really have a friendly but atmosphere. Both of these games, I must say, as well, especially the Arsenal game. I thought was really like, I guess both games. But I've said the Arsenal Aggressive, game, a lot of yeah, that was like, I mean, cards. so many yellow cards I and was strong get sent off. <laughs> Yeah, Jacker. Yeah, I thought that as well. I thought um, it was a really hard, um, hard fought, contested uh, battle yesterday actually and it was a really good game to watch I really enjoyed it um, Spurs definitely throughout the whole game despite Arsenal having control I thought uh, for, for moments I thought Tottenham definitely created the better chances mm. for sure you know Delhi hit the post twice Son um, had a great save from uh, Leno which uh, he should have scored before his goal um, I thought a few moments actually Son um, had really good opportunities to get a shot off on goal and he hesitated a bit too long there was a couple moments on the breakaway he did that and which was annoying, but I think hopefully uh, against Man City it will be a bit sharper, and he did obviously end up taking his goal really, really well. Um, I think Spurs, for the majority of the game, were the much better team. I think just, well, even in Arsenal's best moments, they barely created much. They had a few half chances. Mm. Um, Lloris made a good save from Lacazette, and then the only other chance they had was uh, late on when Saka went through, and uh, Golini made a decent save. Other than that, they didn't really have anything. So they didn't they didn't look in great shape to be fair. But um I gotta say defensively we were really, really sound. I mean I thought, Dyer and Sanchez had brilliant games. I thought Dyer was um um was especially good. I thought Sanchez also had a really good game and as well what I liked about Sanchez was he took a bit more responsibility with his passing and actually a few of his, his long range passes were actually pretty decent and I was pretty happy with that. Um apparently Ali Gold said today that Sanchez has come back from the Copa America in very confident mood, not just because of um, Colombia finishing third and him having a good tournament, but also because of um, he apparently Alistair Gold said also because of a, cl a lot of clubs being interested in him has given him confidence. Apparently that people actually think he's good and stuff like that or something like that, kind of in that that kind of something like that. So that was interesting to, I mean, to know that, about it Sanchez. Did, it did show yesterday because I, I did think I was watching the game yesterday. And I was thinking Sanchez. He's he's got an air of confidence. I was actually thinking that yesterday. Like he's got an air of confidence about him, and I thought Eric Dyer was brilliant. Anything yeah. that came his way got got taken out. You he was know? brilliant. 
Uh, aerial aerial ability was brilliant. Anything that came his way, he got it away. Um, you can't really you can't really complain uh, with those performances from the two centre backs yesterday. Mm. Uh, Regulon, I thought there were a few iffy moments defensively in there from him, but I thought he got forward really well. Um, Ollie Skip was really impressed with mm, him. I, I like mean, Skip. Skip in the first half, he did get, uh, lose the ball in a few good uh, bad moments, but I thought he recovered well from it, and I thought he grew and grew into the game as the game went on. And I thought uh, pr- similar with Hoybier as well. I thought he had a bit of an iffy first half, but he grew into the game second half and uh, put in a commanding performance. Yeah, his passing seemed very controlled, Hoybier. A lot of good switches of play, um, which weren't misplaced and stuff like that. Um, and you got to say, that clash, you saw that clash with Arteta, Arteta on the yeah, touchline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Touchline. That was brilliant. I think Arteta completely shat himself, I think, <laughs> honestly. By the way, the whole thing was so bemusing because Arteta was just clearly in the wrong, like the whole way through. I don't know what the argument was about. I just saw them. So clashing. what happened was Ball was running out of play, right? Arteta so Arteta is um uh, he's outside of his technical area, Arteta, and he's literally on the bit very close to the touchline. So the ball's running out of play. Hoybier's running and sliding to keep it in. And he, he does basically does a sliding challenge to keep the ball in. And he fails to keep the ball in, whatever. It goes slightly out of play. But as he's sliding, he basically nearly takes out Arteta. And Arteta starts complaining to him, like, you, what, what, what's going on here? Like, you, you know, you nearly took me out. And Hoybier basically saying, what are you chatting about? You were outside your technical area, basically on the touchline. Why were you so close? And then Arteta goes like that to shush. And then Hoybier's like, what are you saying? And then Hoybier literally squares <laughs> up to him and Arteta literally backed up like that. <laughs> like, literally shot himself. And it was absolutely brilliant to see. I think Arteta's ego got to him a bit and then he realised, oh shit, I'm probably not acting in the best way. He's um, like, oh shit, I'm up against a Viking. Like, I don't, I don't <laughs> even look at Hoybier, I think. I think, I, yeah, I think Arteta thought he was still like in his playing days when he could like take a midfield battle. Like, Arteta no was chance, like, mate. I don't want no Viking funeral tonight, yeah, Exactly. <laughs> oh, and as soon as, as soon as Hoybier even stepped to him, like you, see, you saw when like, you know, when um, Gattuso stepped to Joe Jordan, he didn't flinch, you yeah. know, didn't even flinch. Like Gattuso head by him. He didn't flinch a bit, didn't yeah. even blink. Yeah. And we, yeah, but when Hoybier just steps to Arteta, backs off completely. Um, and that was brilliant to see. And it was great to see Hoybier uh, asserting his uh, dominance. There. That, was good. that was good stuff. I mean, um, yesterday, when I, when I look at Arsenal, when I try and assess Arsenal, they were toothless going forward. Absolutely toothless. Yeah. I think Aubameyang was anonymous. He was complete. Yeah, Aubameyang was anonymous. To be fair to Lacazette, I actually thought in the first half he played quite well. Yeah. But he, but he didn't kind of get in. He wasn't in, outside the box. He was a big threat. He had that shot Laurie saved and he actually hit the post as well um, from a shot outside the box. But it was all outside the box. Mm. That's the thing. Inside the box, he never didn't, didn't get any joy. Um, and that's the main thing. Yeah, look, uh, yeah, of course, but and Pepe as well. I th- thought didn't do much. No, he didn't. The only Arsenal player I was impressed with yesterday was Smith Rowe. He's the only one that played yeah. well in my opinion. Fair play. He played quite well. He's the only one. Um, I thought Arsenal were absolutely poor, so poor yesterday. Yes, they had a bit of control in the first half, uh, maybe for the last twenty-five minutes. But apart from that, they were so poor. They were so poor, and I thought second half we completely ran them ragged yesterday. Lucas Moore was brilliant, wasn't he? Yeah, his we he, we know how good he can be um, with his dribbling ability. And he always seems also in like big. He's like a big game player as well. He yeah. like he likes. He seems to appreciate yeah. the the bigger games. And um, obviously, I know Arsenal defending is not a massive game, but playing against Arsenal makes you step up your game just naturally. I feel for a player like Lucas. So I felt like he was strong. Whether he was started on the left and moved over to the right, I think in both positions he was strong. Bergvine. I mix, it, mix from Bergen. Yeah, I thought when he was on the right, he was completely anonymous. Yeah. I think when he moved over to the left in the second half, he was a Got lot a more involved. More, yeah. um, and he was a lot better. Delhi. Um, uh, Delhi, I thought... Played well, Delhi. I thought he played well. Brian, for some reason, Brian Daigle thought he was awful. Really? Uh, he did. He came on, he was lambasting him. I actually thought Delhi played quite well. Yeah, the um, thing is with Brian, he, uh, he lambasts Delhi for anything he does because he won't forgive him anymore. He won't forgive for, him. For playing bad uh, for the last three years. I understand that. I understand the lack of patience with him, but I did think he played well. Um, I thought his um, nutmeg the, city yesterday. I thought the two the two times he hit the post were very classic Delhi of old running runs late into the box, just sniffing out the chance, knowing where the ball's going to drop, and especially the, the first time when uh, he makes that movement. Son has good hold up play from Son, who squares it into his path, and um, it was unlucky he hit the post. He really should have scored, but that was like the Delhi we like to see. Yeah, and he had loads of like tricks and flicks that were coming off, and. Um, 
and I thought he was impacting the game positively. There were moments in there where he was losing the ball uh, quite stupidly, uh, which you do get that from Delhi quite often. But I think as on a whole, I was I was very impressed with his performance. And uh, one one player I want to mention is Giovanni Lo Celso. Oh yeah, he was brilliant. He came on and he really did change the game. He really did. And every time he got on the ball, he made something positive happen. Um, and I think I really think not just because of yesterday's game, I was saying it before, but I think he's one of the players that can really come on under Nuno. I'm hoping so. And I think there was, there was a few times, actually, Gio, where he was he had the ball and he was kind of running into trouble and you're thinking, what's he going to do? He didn't have many options. And then he'll just dribble his way out of trouble and then mm -hmm. find someone in space or something like that. Yeah. I thought for the goal, he was instrumental yeah. as well. That lovely pass to Tanganga, very underrated. The yeah. weight of pass on that was exceptional. Um, I thought he had a fantastic cameo yesterday, Giovanni Lo Celso. Got me a bit excited for him going into the season. Obviously, he started uh, pretty much, he started every game, didn't he, for Argentina well, the Copa, in, the, yeah, in the Copa? I think he did. He didn't play... Um, I mean, he got taken off at around 60 minutes. Yeah, every, every, every game, game, yeah, he seemed to be taken off. But apparently when he was on the pitch, he played fairly well. So maybe, it's, I don't know whether it's a fitness thing or whatnot. I don't know what it is, maybe why they took him off. Um, but uh, he did start every game. So I don't think they would have carried on starting him if mm. he kept playing bad. If, if Especially if, all the way to the final. As I'm saying, if he was being taken off because he wasn't playing well, why carry on starting him? Why not just, re like, I think you replace him at that point. So I think clearly they still think he was playing well they didn't I don't think they took him off for performance rating mm. reasons based on my point yeah um so I think um, I'm excited for Gio um and I, I think yeah Nuno could really do a lot with him and um, I'm hoping that uh, he can really finally see the real Gio this season uh, yeah and, uh, I hope so man I hope the so. treatment table I and hope he was, so. thought, yeah it was a great cameo yesterday yeah it bodes well it bodes well with the Giovanni um but look I know it is a pre-season but I think actually we can read more into these pre-season this pre-season and the Chelsea one than probably um, any other of the previous pre-seasons. I think especially this one, because I think for the majority, I think first of all, Arsenal you know, played their complete first team. They seem to take it fairly seriously in this game. I think you know the, the full-blooded challenges that were going in. I think as much as it was a friendly, and obviously it doesn't mean anything, I did, but I do get the feeling both teams wanted to win. Mm. I did get that feeling. I didn't get the feeling that no one cared about this game and... Um, and they didn't care. Like, it didn't have a friendly feeling about it. It no. didn't quite have a, like, this is a super important game feeling, but it didn't have a friendly feeling, no. that's for sure. There's it never going like to be a friendly game. when we come up against them. Lot. Yeah, it felt like two teams actually going for it a bit. So I think we can definitely take a bit more out of this game than we can maybe the previous friendlies. And even when they made subs Arsenal... Um, like they, you know, bring on the likes of Saka, Callum Chambers, first team players. They won't bring on too many youngsters until the very end. So, I think it was a game you can maybe read a bit more into. And I thought Spurs um, definitely uh, had the upper hand in that game. And you can see how upset the lot, a lot, saw how, how upset a lot of the Arsenal fans were after the game, saying that uh, they were toothless and they looked, they were worried with what they were seeing. And yeah, I think that goes to show as well that um, they, I think they didn't want to lose this game. Yeah. As much as him. Obviously, look, in the grand scheme of things, we're never going to turn around and say, oh, like at the end of the season, if Arsenal finish above us, oh, we beat you in a friendly. It was never, that's never going to happen. It, at the end of the day, it's gone now. It doesn't mean anything. But I think for that day, it, it was a nice win. Yeah. And, and just to cap off the, uh, the derby reaction, uh, let's just talk about the classy Tottenham fans and in, in yeah. the reaction to Bakayo Saka coming on uh, yesterday. Because, you know, Everyone knows what the, the atmosphere can be like at a North London derby. Everyone knows the animosity between the two clubs and the two sets of fans. Um, and it wasn't really expected, but it was um, it was a lovely touch by the Spurs fans to cheer uh, Bukayo Saka and clap him when he was coming on the pitch yesterday. It was. I don't really get why anyone's angry. I've, I've seen a few people angry about it and say, well, what are they do. I think it's a nice gesture. I think with what Saka went through the summer as a teenager playing for, you know, playing had the whole weight of the country on his shoulders. Who I know he was an Arsenal player. And as soon as the season starts, I'm going to be hoping he has a flop after flop of a game. Of course. But, but for that moment, I think his first game back after the World Cup, I think was a fantastic gesture, especially all the abuse he got after the penalty miss as well. I think it was very, very classy from the Spurs fans to uh, clap onto the pitch. And he appreciated it as well because um, not only did he give a clap back, he, um, he acknowledged it. And he also did a post on social media appreciating what uh, had happened. And I think um, it was nice for what for a, just a brief moment. It was literally five seconds. I don't know why anyone's getting angry, but for a brief moment, just putting rivalries inside and saying, "Welcome back from uh, the World Cup. You did a great job." 
and um, and we support you uh, for what, after what happened. And I yeah. think that was important. And there was a banner inside the stadium. I don't know if you saw the picture of the banner uh, in support of Bakayo as well. So, look... At the end of the day, uh, rivalry means nothing when stuff like that happens. You know, nobody wants to see uh, that sort of abuse going down, and it's completely abhorrent and uncalled for, and 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 it shouldn't be anywhere in the world. Never mind in football. You know what I mean? Yeah.